Support for the Rod Serling Video Festival on WSKG comes from viewers who are also financial supporters, people just like you. Thank you. Next on WSKG, the Rod Serling Video Festival. Each video you see during the next hour was created by a student in kindergarten through 12th grade. Stay tuned for the best animation, best music video, best of show, and more on the Rod Serling Video Festival. Our first video won for Best K through 6. It was created by Margaret Farrelly and David Montgomery, fourth graders at MacArthur Elementary School in Binghamton. It's called The Clash of Ideas. What kind of project should we do this year? I think we should do video because I just got a new camera. Should we do stop motion? Hmm, okay. How about clay? Nah, clay's too sticky. We could use paper and make origami. Nah, too complicated. How about Legos? Legos? You don't have to mold. And it's not too complicated. So, do you have any ideas for a storyline? I have an idea. It starts off on a route at the edge of a kingdom where a girl who just stole a golden sword is running from two castle guards. One guard is plowed over by a bull pulling a cart and is pushed off a cliff while the other guard trips on the wire she set up earlier. She calls on her horse and she gets away. I like the chase theme, but how about my spy dude drops from a helicopter with a bungee cord. He steals a powerful blaster from an enemy base. He bungees back up and gets away. The army sees the blaster is missing and their hair is gone too. Definitely not. Okay. How about something completely different? I have an idea. The scene takes place at a book fair where all my Greek mythology books are. We'll have a Lego Pegasus and a Lego Poseidon. Then, there's an earthquake! I will move the camera from side to side to make it look like an earthquake. Things on the set will fall off the table. Poseidon flies in on Pegasus, coming to the rescue. Poseidon will use his awesome powers to fix everything. He teleports my favorite books to safety. The end. Are my books saved? Uh, no. Pegasus kinda trampled them. I like the book fair idea, but let's make it Egyptian. With a pharaoh, a mummy, and hieroglyphics. A big fire breaks out. And my Egyptian characters must be my favorite books and leave your Greek ones behind. Let's just forget about that one. How about we combine all four of them? So what would that be like? Well, it would be a spy base where they keep all of their treasures like their books and gems and trophies and coins and gold and silver. And my girl with the golden sword would be there and so would our Greek and Egyptian characters. And an awesome carnivorous scrab beetle will be guarding the most valuable books. All of a sudden, they hear a big boom. As the wall is being knocked down by their most feared enemy. No, enemies! There's a face-off as your spy dude with the powerful blaster appears and wipes out half the enemy. And Poseidon gets away. Meanwhile, fighting breaks out all over. The mummy gets away and the enemies are run off. And the spy base is safe once again. That is an awesome idea. Yeah. The best K through six video for 2013 for the Rod Serling Video Festival. Last year, the team of Margaret and David won an honorable mention for their first video collaboration as third graders, so they're really moving up in the world. Our judges particularly like the mix of animation and live action and the hypothetical discussion of what they might do. Good evening, I'm Gregory Keeler. WSKG is proud to present tonight's award-winning short videos, each made by a student. We've posted all the winning videos online. You can go to WSKG.org and search Serling 2013. This is an international year for the Rod Serling Video Festival. Our next winning student video comes from British Columbia in Canada. 
Here is Interview with a Tune. It won Best Animation, and it was created by Kaya Ogman, a 12th grader at Heritage Woods Secondary School, Port Moody, British Columbia. Hi, I'm Tom, also known as Agent Blaze, the Mutant Spy. I'm the lead character on the animated show, The Adventures of Agent Blaze. Hey everybody, name's Lily. I'm also a character on this Agent Blaze show. On Saturday mornings at 9, was it? Or maybe it was 10. So hold on. The red light means the camera's on? Oh! Dex Daniels, evil genius, acclaimed villain stereotype. Do yourself a favor. Turn off this interview before it further corrupts your mind's senseless drivel. So, my cast and I were asked to do an interview today about our lives as cartoon characters. Hmm, a regular day. Let me see. Well, yesterday was captured by a giant cockroach man who uh, was trying to destroy our town. I used my mega force punch at jet speed to crack the Earth's core thereby throwing them off balance and into a pit of steaming lava. I went for coffee afterwards. It wasn't a very eventful day, not really. Honestly, I don't envy real people. What on earth is so great about being real anyways? You kids have fun with your boring 9 to 5 jobs. I'll just be over here in the corner building a death ray gun out of paper clips, a glue gun, and an old TV set. Yeah, the cartoon world definitely has some difference from the real one. Thank you, Mr. Obvious. Stop wasting time on that blog. How do I feel about being a cartoon character? I mean, it's not all fun and games living in the cartoon world. We've got monsters and aliens. Wasting good footage. The greatest challenges you face as a cartoon character. Hmm. I'd have to say discrimination. I guess people have this misconception that because we're cartoon characters, we're automatically dim, childish. Only you, Carson. Only you. But seriously, it's true. Cut us some slack. We only have so much freedom when the networks are censoring the out of us. And what's with the merchandise? I'm pretty sure I could do without all the creepy stuff. Like, all our heads stuck on toothbrushes, or boxers, or whatever. Who makes this stuff? Media puppets. That's what we are. Brickin' media puppets. Don't give us your sap about how we're messing up your kids with violence. The world is a violent place, darling. Fictional or not, get used to it. Yeah, there's violence in both worlds. Only in ours, the good guys always win. On the whole, though, I'd say we inspire the real world to do better. As charming as this little interview has been, our time is up. You know how it is. Evil plots to hatch and all that. Watch our show, or else the blonde one gets it. Next, Jar of Hearts, a music video created by Marissa Macy in the 12th grade at Tamarick High School in Troy, New York. This video won Best Cinematography. I know I can't take one more step towards you Cause all that's waiting is regret And don't you know I'm not your ghost anymore You lost the love I love the most I learned to live half a life And now you want me one more time Collecting a jar of hearts And tearing love apart You're gonna catch a cold From the ice inside your soul So don't come back for me Who do you think you are? I hear you're asking all around If I To ever fall back in your 
Next on the Rod Serling Video Festival, a video created by a ninth grader at Binghamton High School, Peter Stewart. He won honorable mention for Lil Rocky.
There's a lot to like about Lil Rocky, including Nathan, the actor who played the title character. One of our honorable mention videos for the Rod Serling Video Festival 2013, as judged by our 14 festival judges. You'll see our names at the end of the broadcast, and yes, I'm actually willing to admit publicly <laughs> that I'm a festival judge. We had a lot of fun watching all the finalists and then arguing, uh, I mean politely discussing, our picks for each category. We have a new judge this year, Zach Mulligan, who won festival awards three years in a row, twice winning Best of Show. Zach is studying film and cinematography at Ithaca College now, and he plans to pursue a career in filmmaking. We really appreciated his comprehensive knowledge of various movie-making genres. If you're a student, kindergarten through 12th grade, you too can contribute to the Rod Serling Video Festival and maybe even win a prize. Next year's festival has already begun, so get planning with your friends and get your great five-minute video in by the deadline for next year, May 1st, 2014. You can find out everything you need to know about entering the contest online at rodserlingvideofest.com. It's hard to believe the next video was shot entirely in the backyard of one of the filmmakers. The judges were impressed by the creative use of camera angles and editing to visually convey the story. Here's The Snow Angel. It won Best Special Effects. The filmmakers are Shane Alexander, a 10th grader at Bosey's Evertech High School in Binghamton, and Andrew Bowes in the 11th grade at Vestal High School. Not too much longer. We're getting ready to turn around. Watch your step. Don't slip. Whoa. See, Emily, this is the reason we went on the walk, because the creek is beautiful. This ravine is getting steep, Emily. Yeah, it we, is. We got to watch our feet. Watch exactly where we step. So yeah. We're going to get hurt. Emily, I think my bro I broke my knee. You gotta get help. Hurry! I'm not going anywhere. The, the storm is getting bad. I'm coming to get you. Just come down slowly, Em. Hang on to me, Shane. emergency help. I'm not going anywhere. I'm taking care of you. You're going to at least have to go out, go out in the snow, put an SOS symbol so that the emergency squadron can find us. I'll be back soon. I'm going to put a symbol in the snow. Shane, a helicopter! 
helicopter. Shane, I think the helicopter flew away. I guess that means they didn't see our rescue. So Shane, it will be okay. We'll have to try something else tomorrow. We're going to try something else tonight. Okay. Please watch over my brother and make sure he's safe. Like an angel, a guardian to those you love, young yet so wise, soon you'll see special angels I've sent from above to lift you both up and carry you home. Shane, I think they found us. They must have seen the help sign. Oh, you're a really like lucky kid. It's like you have an angel watching over you. I did, and her name's Emily. These guys are gonna help you out. Thank you for taking care of me, Emily. Thank you for saving my life. Here's an honorable mention video created by three students at Dryden High School in Dryden, New York, 12th grader Bethany Wellgoss, 11th grader Ryan Prunty, and 12th grader Emily Adams. It's called Invention of Color.
Jonathan Kang created the next video. He says it took 18 hours to edit. Jonathan is in the 12th grade at Heritage Woods Secondary School in British Columbia. The video is Sampled, Heritage Woods, and it won Best Editing. The winner for Best Editing on the Rod Serling Video Festival 2013. The judges liked the original music created entirely by painstaking editing. WSKG Public TV is proud to showcase the talents of students in kindergarten through 12th grade on tonight's program. You can learn more about the festival and see all of the winning videos at WSKG.org. The Rod Serling Video Festival was founded by Larry Casson in 1995. And tonight's broadcast is a culmination of the partnership between WSKG and the Rod Serling School of the Arts at Binghamton High School, where Larry Casson is, among other things, the managing director of the Performing Arts Department. He's a multi-talented guy. I think of him as the consummate theater techie, but he's got a lot more going on as well, including speaking to students around New York State and beyond about the legacy of Binghamton High School graduate Rod Serling. Everyone has a hometown, Binghamton's mine, said Rod Serling. He went on to make television history, writing many of the award-winning episodes of The Twilight Zone. In fact, Rod Serling was the winner of more Emmy Awards for dramatic writing than anyone in television history, and he co-wrote that first Planet of the Apes movie as well. We're always impressed by the quality of submissions to the video festival, and we hope students continue to be inspired by Rod Serling's legacy of quality writing for television. We're especially impressed when multiple elements of filmmaking come together in a student video, writing and research, acting, technical quality, and we do appreciate a good laugh. Our next video had many things going for it. We ended up awarding it Best Comedy. It's The Long Off Season by Calvin O'Connor, an 11th grader at Niskayuna High School, Niskayuna, New York, the winner of this year's award for Best Comedy. Everybody knows a man named George Herman Ruth, one of the greatest baseball players of all time, setting formidable records in home runs, runs batted in, and on-base percentage. His name became a pinnacle of both baseball and American culture. However, Ruth was not always successful and happy during his career as a major league ball player, and very few people know of the dark events that took place during the off season of 1926 to 27. The 
year was 1926, and the Yankees were pitted against the Cardinals in the 24th World Series, with three games won by each team. In the seventh and deciding game, the Yankees down by one run and two outs in the bottom of the ninth, George Herman Ruth, the runner on first base, attempted a steal of second. Ruth was thrown out by ten feet. You're out of here! The Yankees lost the game and the series. In the history of baseball, it was the only World Series that ended with a base runner being thrown out. Ruth did not even confront his team after their loss, even though the manager owed him $174 from their eight-hour poker game the previous night. After that final game, dejected and depressed, Ruth left Yankee Stadium deciding to walk home. Four days later, he was found on Shaver Avenue in Syracuse, New York. He walked back to New York City. Desperate to start a new life after his humiliation, Ruth looked for new jobs in the city. First, he turned to the arts and auditioned for a local theater production. Please begin. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing end them. To die, to sleep, no more. And by sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks. Oh, somewhere in this favored land the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville for the mighty case he has struck out. That's not even close. That's nowhere near correct. You are out of here! The rest of the team and I began to worry about George after that series. Most of the guys lost touch with him, but the few that did remain in touch said he took a time for the waste. He lost his hearty appetite and a lot of weight. He was eating one small meal a day, a ball of twine. I later heard that he tried to reconnect with his deceased mother through a medium. Ruth had in fact tried to speak with his deceased mother Catherine through one of the local psychics, hoping that his mother still would not think of him as a failure. Okay, for this exercise, you're going to need to raise your hand so I can connect to your mother's spirit through your mind. Mr. Ruth, sir, for this exercise, we're going to need you to remove your glove. <sighs> All right, we'll just have to try this with your other hand instead. Now, what would you like to say to your mother? That I was safe. It was a bad call. I haven't disappointed her. You were out! And, and you're, you're still a big disappointment. disappointment. You, you should have followed my advice and become a stockbroker. Mother, please listen I to me. I told you over and over that if you chose business, you'd be a millionaire by 1930. But I guess you just live to ignore my advice, don't you? After receiving comfort from his mother, Ruth decided to move away from New York City and live with his sister Mammy in Philadelphia, hoping that spending time with his sweet young niece could help him get through this long off-season. Say, me, I win. Oh man, not again. How could I if lose? If you don't stop being a baby, people won't want to play with you. In that following season of 1927, Ruth regained his appetite, hit 60 home runs, and led them to victory in the World Series. Ruth lived on to become the most iconic baseball player, holding some records that remain to this day unbroken. And from that moment on, he adopted the nickname Baby, as a reminder of what his niece called him. History shortened it to Babe. Now, after Best Comedy, we move to something more serious. Genevieve Mecklenburg, a Binghamton High 10th grader, won Best Music Video for her treatment of the My Chemical Romance song, Cancer. Get me a drink of water Cause my lips are chapped and faded Call my Aunt Marie Help her gather all my things And bury me in all my 
favorite colors My sisters and my brothers still I will not kiss you Cause the hardest part of this Is leaving you Now turn video genre continues to receive many festival submissions each year. We thought that one was particularly well shot and edited. You're watching the prize-winning videos from the 2013 Rod Serling Video Festival, and you can see all of this year's winning vids online at WSKG.org. Rod Serling's daughter, Anne, lives in Tompkins County, and she's written a new book called As I Knew Him, my dad, Rod Serling. You can learn a little bit more about the man we didn't see on TV. The book is in bookstores now. And you can hear an hour-long interview with Ann Serling on WSKG Radio. Ann will tell host Bill Jaker about growing up under the wing of the acclaimed writer, Rod Serling. And she'll take questions from listeners. Listen for Off the Page, Tuesday, June 11th, live at 1 p.m. with a rebroadcast at 7 p.m. on WSKG Radio and online at WSKG.org. Stay tuned for a Twilight Zone parody involving a young man and his iPhone. We think Rod Serling might have appreciated it. But first, a zombie flick with a human touch. Liam Walsh, a ninth grader at Shenango Forks High School in Binghamton, won Best Screenplay for the next video called Trapped.
thought I saw something. I saw something too. It almost killed me. Something in his eyes looked human. That kind of talk will get you killed. You remember what happened to your mother when she got infected? There was nothing left of her. She was gone. I never would hurt her. I loved her. <laughs> it wasn't her anymore. She would have killed us both. And I had to do what I had to do. Just don't you hesitate. Don't you ever hesitate again. You understand me? Yeah, I understand. Dad, you're on. It's just a scratch. It didn't get me. Let's get out of here. What? Is there something behind me? I can't move my head. Can you hear me? Hey, what's going on? Why can't you hear me? Why can't I move my head? Why can't I move my arms? Hey, what are you doing? It's me. What are you doing? Wait a minute. Wait! Next, this year's winner for Best Direction. It's a Twilight Zone parody called The Nightlight Zone, made by Emily Biarka. She's in the 12th grade at Bellarmine Preparatory School in Tacoma, Washington. Imagine, if you will, a young boy infatuated with his iPhone, his companion, his confidant, his connection to a world of endless possibilities. But this connection will soon take him to the Nightlight Zone. So, Siri, you want to hear a joke? Not really. Knock, knock. Who is there? Cargo. Cargo who? Cargo. Beep, beep. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, here's the next one. It's really funny. So, knock, knock. Who is there this time? Dwayne. Dwayne who? Dwayne the tub. I'm drowning. <laughs> Would you turn that down? You are such a spoiled brat. Launch again to the 21st century. Books are for dead people. That's it. I'm going to tell Dad to cut your data plan. You can't let her cut our data plan. What am I going to do, Siri? I'm already grounded. What you need is an app. What are you talking about? Search for the Torment Your Sister application. Impersonate people, make intimidating sounds, and capture endless video. The price is negotiable? What does negotiable mean? Just install the app. Everything will be okay. Let's try the impersonation button. Young lady, you're in so much trouble. Get down here right now. Young lady, you are in so much trouble. Get out here now. Don't you give it a push? It is fun. I'm in the screen. Can you get me out? Harry, help! 
a boy and his iPhone forever linked in the nightlight zone. We can now play all day, all day, all day, all day, all day, all day, all day. Haley Biller created the next video. Haley is in the 12th grade at Heritage Woods Secondary School in British Columbia. It's called Faint Hearted, and it won for Best Use of Sound. Another of the Canadian contributions to this year's Rod Serling Video Festival, Faint Hearted. It won for best use of sound, but the judges liked several things about it, including the crying knight, the well-done dragon, and the storyline. Only one more video left to go, the 2013 Best in Show. Our winner will receive a $100 gift certificate from Unicorn Electronics and a digital video recorder, courtesy of the Rod Serling Video Festival. Plus, all of the finalists get an official Rod Serling Video Festival t-shirt, courtesy of Knucklehead Embroidery. If you're a student kindergarten through 12th grade, you too could have a shot at the goodies and fame and glory, all by creating your video masterpiece five minutes or less and submitting it to the Rod Serling Video Festival for next year. You can learn more online at rodserlingvideofest.com. Thanks a million to all the students who submitted videos this year. Keep those creative minds turning and those cameras rolling. And thanks to you for watching the Rod Serling Video Festival here on WSKG Public TV. And now, the best of show 2013. Created by Ashley Adams, a 12th grader at Gilderland High School, Gilderland Center, New York. It's called Nigel and Myra.
Thank you.